If you can get this four step process down, you're well on your way of making the movies you always dreamed of. In this video, I want to share the cinematic lighting techniques I learned that helped me create more cinematic shots. We're going to focus on four main principles and I like to visualize these principles like the process of putting together the layers of a simple yet delicious cheeseburger. At the base of our cheeseburger is the flat bun. It's the least exciting part of the cheeseburger but it's a necessary layer to put it all together. But before we even set up our lights, we first have to learn to control the existing lights. This is the first step of our process in building out a cinematic shot. Once you've set up your frame, before you add any lights, have a look at how the frame looks like with the existing lights in the scene. In this shot we have over here, for example, the overhead lights are barely bright enough to expose our subject and the window in the back is completely blown out. Every scene will have a different lighting problem that needs to be solved. So like the base of our bun, we need to prepare the base of our scene to make it look as cinematic as possible. Turn off all the house lights and draw any curtains or blinds that you may have in your scene to control any light spill within the scene to a look that you are satisfied with. I'm also adding a variable ND filter to my lens, setting it to a stop that brings down the exposure of the window to a level that retains the detail. Now that we have set the base of our scene, it is time to move on to the next step of assembling our cheeseburger adding the Wagyu meat. This is the step where we light our subject, but this is where many beginner filmmakers make their first mistake. Many beginner filmmakers would just place the light in a spot that's convenient and call it a day. We're losing a key element in visual storytelling. It's like eating a cheeseburger without the meat. It's just not the same. I'm talking about motivated lighting. Motivated lighting refers to the use of lighting sources that are consistent with the story and setting of the scene. This means that the lighting in a scene appears to be coming from a logical and believable source such as a lamp or a window. Imagine throwing a punch on someone and they just flinch in the opposite direction of the punch. It's just weird. This can break the reality of your scene and the same holds true with motivated lighting. In our short example, the motivating light source is this window which is to the right of our subject. So it makes more sense to place the light on the same side as the motivating light source. Film aims to recreate reality which is why cinematographers always approach their scenes with motivating lighting in mind. When building out your frame and scene, keep these light sources in mind that you can use as a motivating light source for your scene. Now that we have our base and our meat, we still can't call this a cheeseburger without well, some cheese. This is where we add some drama into the mix, especially for our lactose intolerant friends. We do this by shooting into the shadow side of our subject. Shooting shadow side simply means placing the camera on the side of your subject where the shadows are casted on the subject's face from your key light. So if the key light is on the right side of your subject's face, place the camera to the left side of your subject. Shooting shadow side creates more depth on the face, making the shot look more dramatic and visually interesting. This is common practice in Hollywood, especially in dialogue, as it adds more visual interest in an inherent inherently static scene by having the shadow fall off closer to the camera. Lighting placement and angle plays a big role in the shadows that are casted on your subject's face, so play around with the placement and angle to get a look that suits your story. This is not a rule you must follow, but it's a simple technique you can use to make your shot look more cinematic. A good story also needs a good ending, so to top off our delicious cheeseburger, we gently place our butter toasted sesame seed bun rounding out our cheeseburger, giving it the final form that we we all know and love. The final step in our cinematic lighting process is to light our scene. The world that our characters are in is just as important as the overall story. So it is only fitting that we give the space around our subject some love too. Back to our example, we can do something as simple as adding in a practical light to fill in our scene. A practical light is a light source that is visible on camera and is also part of the scene or set. By placing a practical light over the work desk, I've now created another visual storytelling element to this shot, suggesting that our subject Jack is someone who does a lot of tinkering within the space, adding more depth to the scene. You can play around with the placement of practicals within your frame and get really creative in this last step. Just make sure the visual story stays consistent with the overall scene you are trying to build. You can apply this four step process to any scene to make it look cinematic. Let's take this living room for example. Using our cheeseburger analogy, we first set our base by controlling all the existing lights in our scene. We then add in the meat by ensuring the key light on our subject is motivated by a source within our scene. And in some drama by shooting shadow side, then top it off with our sesame seed bun with sprinkles of practical lights to bring the scene to life. With this four step process, we've turned these shots from looking like this to this.
If you can get this four step process down, you're well on your way of making the movies you always dreamed of. Once you've mastered these four lighting principles, watch this video next to learn how you can shape the light on your subject's face to create different looks to further enhance your visual storytelling. Get out there, start practicing, and dream big. See ya!